We're back with another GTN Coaches Corner, your chance to ask us any questions you like and treat us like your own personal coaches. Yeah, exactly. We've got a huge, wonderful array of questions, but if there's something that is sort of niggling you and you can't find the answer to it elsewhere, then make sure you drop us the question using the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. You can do that below this video. And to crack things off, we've got this question from Pierre Roux, who says, what is the best way to catch a wave on the way to the beach after a sea swim in triathlon? Yeah, now there's a load of good examples, but more recently, Malibu Super League Triathlon, you may have seen Lucy Charles Barkley leading the swim only for the group behind to make use of those waves coming in and catch straight back up to her. So yeah. all of that advantage lost in seconds by them utilizing that wave. Now there are a number of different ways in which you can catch waves and it kind of does depend a little bit on the size of the waves. But in short, if you are trying to catch waves, it does pay dividends to just slow things down a little bit and actually look back at the waves as you're swimming into shore rather than just plowing on and hoping that you're going to catch them. Yeah, it's a bit of luck involved as well because obviously they come in sets and you don't know how quickly the next wave is going to come. So you've got to make that decision quite early as to whether you are going to wait and then take that advantage or if you're just going to try and keep going. So you need to try and keep swimming and looking sort of almost back behind your shoulder to see what's coming. And it's going to take quite a lot of practice to, to get that right sort of position on the the wave when you feel the push it's a great feeling but then so often it just goes on your left then swimming again so you need to try to accelerate a few strokes as that wave comes it's almost as if you do surf it's the same as trying to catch that wave and once you feel it pick you up that's when you then need to try to actually make yourself as kind of big but streamlined so that you can start to just body ride it so to speak it's my favorite kind of swim practice just getting in <laughs> and trying to surf some waves uh, but yeah as heather says um it, it's about trying to surf that wave and catch the wave and there are a number of different ways in which you can do that for some of the small waves what i've found helps is just keep spinning those arms because there isn't enough power behind it so you have to almost keep moving the arms but to help it you can almost angle your head down so you're diving it down into the wave to allow you sort of to catch that wave and push you along for some of the bigger waves as heather says you have that quick sprint and spin of the arms to get yourself up to the speed of the wave catch that wave and then you can actually at times surf that wave put the arm out push down into the water and surf it in but yeah it does take a bit of trial and error, a bit of practice to get the hang of this. And it's pretty satisfying if you do get it. It's an amazing feeling. So um, I would suggest go and find a great beach with some lovely waves and have a fun practice session. Yeah. And one thing I will say is it is still quite hard work. Um, it's almost like sprint intervals at the end of the swim leg and the triathlon. So don't expect it to just be a breeze. It is hard work, but obviously you can gain quite a big advantage. Yeah, for sure. All right, this next one, Mark, I think is angled at you. It's um, from Buffalo Joe. Mark and James, recent, uh, really interested to hear how you pulled up after your recent marathon. Does the difference in training and performance change the recovery? Um, yeah, interesting. I know, well, actually also for Sam. So Sam obviously was the fastest out of us and did actually um, say during the race that he was having a bit of an issue of his ankle. Unfortunately, he hasn't ran since oh, as a result. No. Yeah, he's had a real issue of his Achilles and he felt that sort of the week leading in, but was so determined to do it. Uh, for myself, obviously, I just had a bit of a shocker, really wasn't feeling great on the day, tried to ignore that. Um, and yeah, I didn't feel great for the week after. Um, so yeah, I clearly was fighting something. But in terms of just muscle recovery, I was fine because I didn't do the full marathon. Uh, I think for James, actually, it was a really good kickstart for him. I, I know he was suffering for a good couple of weeks after in terms of muscle soreness and fatigue, but I think he, it gave him a lot of motivation to keep pushing on and get training. Obviously, now he's doing the Swift Triathlon Academy, so yeah, follow along for that. Well, it sounds like even though you guys have all been pros, you've all learned something from that, oh, which absolutely. just shows you're always learning as an athlete, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. Um, now we have Angela G. Um, I'm thinking of trying my first triathlon in spring 2022 and wondering if you normally train for all three sports all year round most equally or focus on weight training in the winter and ramp back up the cardio in the spring we've had lots of questions along these lines haven't we over the over the past few coaches corners but i think it's really interesting to have it from someone who's a beginner yeah definitely uh, I, the, the strength training part um is really interesting and obviously we've discussed this before but maybe not so much the strength part and i think we're big advocates on the channel of including strength work it's interesting because having recently spoken to a lot of pros not all of them do include yeah. strength work no, which don't. surprised me actually um but i definitely think I mean, particularly for a lot of amateurs coming through and just trying to um, strengthen their body up being robust to be able to do triathlon um, can be really useful and i guess it's highlighting those areas in your 
body weaknesses etc that need that strength work yeah and it also depends you know you're saying you're new to triathlon but whether you've already got those three disciplines because if you're currently really weak at the swimming I would say you've got to focus on that this winter and get your swimming up so it does depend if you're already doing all three sports and you've just not put them together as a triathlon then yes just the strength and conditioning work will complement all of those sports and you're suggesting you know do I do the cardio work in the spring you don't have to do one or the other you can still really winter is great for focusing on strength and then you're doing low level cardio because it complements it quite well if you've got a little bit of doms or whatever you can you know, use that to help recover from it so it, it's a matter of working out where you're at with the others before you build in and focus on that strength program I'd say but yeah it, if you can do it it will really help in the long term. Yeah, absolutely. Next question from Jim Lasky. Um, I know the lovely Heather spoke <laughs> on types of shoes for oh, specific Jim training. <laughs> um, but what about specific race shoes for specific race distances? Should we all buy Vaporflies, for instance, or is there a sweet spot shoe price slash performance for each distance? Uh, this is a really interesting one because even prior to we, the carbon super shoes that you're referring to, we, Heather and myself, we would always go to races and use what we called race flats. Mm. So we're picking out these shoes that are slightly lighter weight and I would have shoes that I would rather use for something like a 5K and another set of shoes that I might use for a half marathon. And yeah, simple answer is the shorter distance will probably go lighter yeah. weight, less cushioning, um, and the longer the distance a little bit more cushioning. Obviously with the carbon shoes coming in, yeah, I think the, the facts are out there, the science and the testing's out there. They, they are beneficial mm. um, and um, certainly worth exploring. And I actually think they are a little bit more versatile in terms of the distances. So you can use the same shoe from sort of a 5K through to a marathon. Mm. I think you only need to look at, you know, the elites and yes, some of them are sponsored, but even those that aren't, they're running, you know, a 5K road race in the same shoe, like you say, that they'd be doing a marathon in. And obviously when it gets to shorter stuff on track, then it's the spikes, but still including that carbon play. If you are someone who's going out and you've got a budget to go and buy a pair of shoes, I guess you need to work out yourself if you're going to go big and just go for the one pair with carbon or if you are maybe going to get a couple of different shoes that one that's for the shorter race that's a bit lighter but then one that you can train in and race over the longer distance but yeah that depends on your budget and I guess your priority with your shoes. Yeah and actually I mean we've spoken about this before the carbon fiber is only part of the equation in these super shoes a lot of it comes down to the foam in them and that foam is still used in a lot of the other shoes that maybe don't have carbon fiber in them so if you're not necessarily at the pointy end of races or necessarily looking to break any records you might be fine with just some pretty good race flaps about carbon so don't feel like you need to go and break the bank buying these super shoes and final point i think i personally feel it really depends on what pace you're running at because when i'm doing you know a longer race or when i did this sort of multi-triathlon i found that actually i wasn't benefiting from the carbon because the style of my running was was sort of yeah. less forward so i was it had less of a forward lean so maybe you need to actually even you think about how fast are you running personally and what shoe suits you that way absolutely um great question though next one from sam the bean can i do hill sprints to improve my lactic threshold or does it improve just improve vo2 max i'm trying to improve my running performance for sprint triathlon by adding a speed session to my training program well i wouldn't get to start with too bogged down on your lactic threshold of vo2 max because you want to increase both of them if you want to go faster in triathlon and a lot of training is going to be bumping both up so don't yeah don't get stuck on that but i like the fact that you're thinking about using hills because they are just a wonderful tool for improving your running full stop but if it's the speed aspect that you're really wanting to kind of dial in on you need to make sure you're finding the, the right type of hill and you're approaching it in the right way because hills can also be great for strength work and great for endurance so like in the winter you might want to do longer hills and you know, longer reps or maybe you know more gradual whereas if you're wanting power then you maybe want a steeper hill so you're really kind of firing those glutes up but if it's maybe the speed element you're working on I would say you want something that's I don't know between three and five percent not very good with my percentages um but like around 30 seconds but you are going hard on those and then you're recovering well so you're jogging or walking back down and you're going flat out again the next you know on the next rep so that it's really actually working that top end yeah yeah and one of the my favorite sessions used to be either doing short hill reps or as I progressed through them doing those short flat out hill reps and then into a 500 meter yeah. runoff on the top of the hill and that's really tapping into that lactate threshold so you're almost hitting both 
Yeah, in, in as a three k runner, our coach prescribed that a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah, and it also makes you feel good too because you've kind of yeah. worked and dug down, and then you've got to lift yourself up yeah. and find that. I wouldn't level. recommend it on the first week. Allow yourself to build up to it, um, and then you actually feel strong when you're running off to the top. Anyway, next question uh, from Nina. I've just completed my first marathon. Thanks for all your advices. Um, but during the race, my hip and medial glutes started hurting, and it was even worse the day after. What can I do to prevent this from happening in the future? Is it just like of muscles what kind of exercises would help now i will throw this to heather in a second because she is far more qualified than myself on this but i just straight off you're not alone this is something that happens to everyone i have it myself particularly when i maybe haven't been running as much or don't feel like i've been doing conditioning work um and yeah as i've sort of alluded to it tends to be when i'm maybe just not quite prepared for the distance enough yeah i mean first up congratulations Nina, on doing your first marathon and as we just talked about earlier you are going to hurt a day after a marathon whatever like whatever conditioning you do so don't worry too much and you need to assess that pain of whether it is just a muscular pain which it sounds like and is that from the fatigue of the muscle or is there something a little bit more serious and niggly going on because if there is then I'd say go and see a physio but it does on the whole sound like it's to do with just a little bit of weakness and maybe your running gait form which is always accentuated towards the end of a marathon because everything gets tired but if you think about it every time your foot lands on the ground you've got all that weight through one leg and your hip area and your trunk has to hold your body up because you know, otherwise we just collapse over the other side. So you've got to activate all of those muscles around your glutes, also your trunk, and that includes the front and the back of your trunk, and obviously your leg muscles as well. There's so many exercises you could be doing, but I would say you need to really focus on doing single leg work. So anything that's going to be kind of replicating and getting everything switched on. A really simple exercise to kind of engage that outside area would be to stand on a step, but actually have yourself parallel with that step so that your, your foot is parallel with the edge of the step. Your other foot is just sort of in midair off it. And then keeping your weight on that standing leg, drop your hip down so your foot goes down towards the lower step and then hitch it back up. So you're just doing that. Imagine my hips my shoulders and my hips and you're just doing this action and it's a standing leg which will be getting activated and that is a very similar movement to what it has to do when you're running and I know we've not got time to like delve into loads but we've got a video on um, glute activation exercises on the channel so I would recommend checking that one out and just doing some really you know, general conditioning work yeah and you'll feel probably exactly the same sensation as you felt during the marathon yeah. when you start doing that exercise it's <laughs> a very good one uh, right on to the next one from it's a warny um, I started swimming two weeks ago started with some drills but soon tried to learn breaststroke because it's much easier slash more enjoyable and I can do it already a little bit. Um, is this something that's recommended or should I just do the drills for freestyle and not bother with breaststroke. I'm a beginner training for triathlon. Uh, well, firstly, obviously fantastic to hear that you're getting stuck into triathlon. Not a problem at all that you're doing breaststroke. Obviously, just being in the water and improving your cardiovascular fitness is fantastic. So. For now, yeah, of course, carry on doing breaststroke, but I would still recommend trying to include those freestyle drills because they are gonna help you, A, to just learn the movements of freestyle, but also sort of spatial awareness uh, in the water and where your hands are entering and moving. And probably before you know it, you'll start piecing it all together and it'll become a lot easier. Yeah, there is so much to swimming front crawl, and I think the key is gonna be working out your breathing, and that's something which you can't really develop in breaststroke. Um, yes, it's that comfort zone, but ideally, and you know, if you are planning on doing a triathlon, on, you want to be competent and confident doing front crawl because when it comes to racing art, everything is that little bit harder and we're not saying that to put you off we want you to make sure you're at the level where you are going to go and enjoy that triathlon you know you've got breaststroke as a backup you know it's fine to do some breaststroke throughout an event but you want to develop your front crawl to that certain level so I would say yes it's harder but it's worth it in the long run yeah but I've got to say fantastic that you are doing drills because one of the biggest oh. mistakes that we've spoken about on one of the previous coaches corners is that people just jump in the water and just try to swim freestyle before learning the technique and then they're ingraining that bad technique. So the fact that you're doing drills to start off with is fantastic. Yeah, so, great stuff. Well done. Our final question for this episode of Coach's Corner from E. Foley. I'm planning to do my first half marathon in March. I do not want to start training too soon as I may lose motivation or peak too soon. How should I structure a training plan to make the most of the training time I have, but avoid these common pitfalls? Would love to incorporate some 5 and 10 kpb attempts along the way, but not sure when these would be best to do. Thanks. Well, I think E. Foley, you are on point with so many of us. I think we're probably in that same boat and 
First up, I would say that the spring or whenever your marathon is, is actually only going to be about 16 weeks away. So when you when you look at it like that, that isn't actually very long. And I fall into that pitfall of going, it's in the spring, I don't need to think about it until the new year. But by the time you've kind of got over Christmas and New Year, you've then only got like eight weeks. Yeah. So, so put it in your diary and work backwards to start with, because that will all straight away give you that motivation. And then choose some other events like those five and 10 Ks and get them locked in and work out which you want to prioritize and and then you know use them to help you build to that half marathon. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I've definitely fallen into this trap numerous times before. We tend to do the Bath half marathon exactly. here in Bath in March. And I think, oh, it's fine until mm -hmm. January, I'll start doing the training. But actually, yeah, as you say, you fact in okay I've got four weeks in Jan, four weeks in Feb, oh and then there's a half marathon. That's not very long to try and get yourself race ready so I don't think you are in any danger of peaking too soon if you were to start now but yeah get in some races they're fantastic just for the motivation so you're not just training week in week out you've actually got something to look forward to and really get stuck into and they don't also necessarily need to be pb style races we're doing a lot of off-road races at the moment where the time doesn't really matter but they're really good hard workout at the weekends yeah exactly i mean now maybe you've got time to get one race in before christmas to give you a bit of an idea of where you are maybe a 10k now and then you can fit in a couple of 5ks in the in that interim time in january because they don't take that much out of you and maybe focus on one 10k that might be too much but yeah you can focus you know really have a little bit of a taper which works in with your actual training cycle so say you're doing sort of three weeks harder and a week easier put your race at the end of that and then you crack back on with the next one and it'll it'll come in no time that half marathon so good luck yeah awesome well thanks ever so much to all of you for the questions please do keep them coming using that hashtag gtn coaches corner in the comment section down below or under any video if you enjoyed today's video Give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe down below to watch more.